Good evening everybody, welcome back to the Angry Cast and the Return of Minecraft, and we are in 1.15, the B update. Um, we're back at the homestead after doing some traveling again. And what we're going to work on today is how to uh, get some automatic bee farming going on. Now, when I say automatic bee farming, I'm talking about let's getting honey, uh, honeycomb so we can make more, um, more bee nests or beehives. Beeh oh, beehive. <laughs> Sorry, that was a lame joke and I don't know why I went there. But uh, we can do that and I've, I've now enclosed this entire uh, farming area. And I've kitted it out so we can have an automatic bee farm. Uh, so we can put in there. Now, you will see through the power of editing, um, we're going to go exploring still back on to the, to the east. Or I'm sorry, to the south from here where I found a beehive. And that's all going to be in the footage you're going to see after we're done with this tutorial. But for now, let's talk about what we're doing here. So, i got to be able to show you without you not being able to see it. So, of course... As you can see over there, I have a bee hive, and that is made. Uh, that is made with. Let me go get to a chest or a, a, a crafting bench. I can show you. Okay, so the crafting bench will show you what we're gonna do here. So I have. You, see, you will see there is a bee nest here, and that is gotten. You will see how you how you get it. You have to pick up a bee nest uh, with a silk touch uh, uh, tool, which I have my my pickaxe here, which is a silk touch efficiency five and mending all gotten through our automated, our, our, our AFK fish farm, uh, all the books to make that. So I was able to pick this up by putting a, a campfire underneath the bee nest and then that traps the bees inside and then you use the silk touch pickaxe on it and then it will keep the bees inside. You will take the entire bee nest. You also get the advancement as you will see in the video and then we can bring it back here and then transport the bees into the, um, beehive and then once the bee once the beehive is empty or beehive is full of the bees that I bred there's three of them in there I will then take away the bee nest and then they will just live right into the beehive uh, so that being said how do you make a beehive well the bee nest itself is not enough you need to use uh, you, sh you can use the, the bottles to get the honey from the beehive, bee nest, or you can use shears to get honeycomb. And you can usually get about three pieces of honeycomb. And again, you'll see how many I, I will make it, but I'm going to show you again. So let's see here. So beehive is basically the three honeycomb that I will sh have shaved off of the bee nest itself once it's full. Now what happens is the bees come out, they go and they pollinate everything around them. You make sure you have flowers around them. Then they will come back into the nest and then after a while, you'll see the sides start to kind of like fill up. That means there's honey in there. Now you can either do uh, get honey from a bottle or use shears and get a bee comb, uh, honeycombs. And with the honeycombs, you can then make the bee hive by taking planks and the honeycomb. So once that's done, you will need a few other things. And it's a very simple machine. You're going to need a dispenser, which of course is... cobblestone with a bow and a piece of redstone in it, an observer, which of course is cobblestone, two pieces of redstone dust and another quartz, and then two, uh, one building block and two more pieces of redstone and a pair of shears. And now we're going to go show you why we need all this. Okay, I've kind of destroyed my area here a little bit just to show you what we're talking about. So you put the beehive right in that space right there. You put the dispenser next to it facing inward and put inside the shears then you take an observer put it on top looking down on top of the beehive and the structure block or a building block behind it and then on top of those two top blocks you put in redstone okay you can see on top here there's two pieces of redstone on that uh on the observer and the structure block now what happens is is that that structure block with the redstone will send a signal once the beehive is uh, activated it will send it to the dispenser which will then use the shears to chop off some uh, honeycombs now we need to set up our collection point okay now there are a couple ways you could do this I kind of like went a little crazy with the idea uh, and just set up a hopper system that goes all the way around pretty much 
pretty much anything that falls out of there is going to go right into the hopper system. And I may have to tweak it along the way, and I may have to actually come up with a better collection system, but for now, this should work. So let's set uh, our bee uh, high, our bee nest down, and let them uh, let them go do their thing. Oh, 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 we got to get there first. Shit. There you go. Now, give them a chance for the bees to come out and uh, do their thing. They may or may not do their thing. I don't know. <laughs> They may not. They may say, screw you, we're not coming out. Oh, there they go. There they go. There they go. What am I doing? There they go. There they go. All right, now, the wonderful thing about this uh, system is that the bees will uh, go over to the flowers, do their thing on the flowers, and then they will fly back to the bee nest and, and, and pop in. Uh, and, and stay. Or the beehive, I should say. But I gotta get all three of them out of there before I can take away that beehive. And as they do that, they will then uh, pollinate. And actually, they will uh, help the crops grow faster as they go to each every flower. As they will drop the pollination, you know, they will pollinate the flowers. Oh, there's two out. There's the baby bee. Let's get the third bee out of there. We can get the, the beehive back out. Let's get in there. It's almost done. Oh, look at that. We've already got some... We've already got some, uh, some stuff. So, I have another bottle still. I have one more bottle. Come on. Oop. Look, I got honey. Oh, I got some honey. Oh, they went back into the hive. Damn it. <laughs> We're gonna have to. Uh, we may. We may have to be be uh, a bastards about this. I don't. I don't want to. I do not want to break that hive. But I do want them to come out. So we'll just put that there for now. Let's see what happens. We got two out. They're hanging around there. I just need to get that third one out there, and then I can take away the beehive or the bee nest and leave them with the hive. Because abandoned hive, like uh, bees that are just don't have a hive or a nest to go to, will search out an abandoned one. And if there's nothing, if the, the beehive is there, they will take up residence in it. I just need to get that last bee out of the hive, so they can go to the bee, or yeah, to the bee nest. So they can go to the beehive. Now that he's sort of like hanging out over there doing his thing, he might go right back to that. It's the closest one. So we just have one more left out of there. Now the one thing about this um, this automated thing is, is that yeah, they pollinate the crops, they grow the crops faster. You still have to um, plant them. I mean, they will. It'll make it go faster. But you and we have our automated uh, harvesting mechanism with the, you know, all the uh, redstone and the water. But we still have to replant all of them by hand. I mean, that's why we have a door on here and everything closes, so we don't lose any of the bees. Oh, don't go back there. Don't go back there. You. Hi. So, but there you go. <laughs> now, the idea being that everything that drops off when it shears off the honeycomb and it goes into the collection system of hoppers because I have a crap ton of iron. I figured, why the hell not? And then it will go into here um, when that when that happens. So hmm. All right, we got two out. Just need that third one to come out. They're mad at me now. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you uh, try to collect the hive whether without a campfire underneath it. But oh no! What happened? Why did one die? Why did you die? What the shit? Oh no. 
Now I'm kind of stuck in here. What? Why are they dying? Jeez. Oh, uh, well. What the hell? Okay, well, apparently it turns out, doing a little research, that bees can take damage if they touch water. So if they're touching anything in there that's water, they uh, they will die. But, uh, you know, I, I can go back out into the world. <clears throat> I know where there's bees, beehives at. I can use the same method with the silk touch pickaxe and a fire, uh, a campfire to collect more bees. And then I can bring them all back, breed them, and have a whole big thing full of bees in there working around so there'll always be more uh for that so but uh you know that's that's what we wanted to show you how to do now we're gonna go out and uh continue exploring and uh you will see exactly how i came across the bees that we used for this particular <clears throat> uh tutorial uh and again um this is not my design of course uh not that uh, not that uh, creative or um smart uh, but uh <clears throat> channel by the name of waddles who i follow uh, was the one who came up with the, uh, the design, or at least, oh, look at that, we already got honeycomb out of that thing, how about that? So, yeah, so, we will, uh, we will, we will continue on in that, and Waddles, thank you very much for the, the, uh, the design idea, um, we're gonna use it to good, put it to good use, and now we have a, uh, cool-ass, uh, you know, better automated, uh, better automated farm, we're mixing, we're mixing them all together now, how about that? So we better go get some sleep, and then we're gonna go on the road and keep exploring. But we'll see you then. So take it over, uh, take it away uh, there, just a uh, cinematic view, Bongo.
Thank you. 